welcome to To The Point. Now, if you've been watching To The Point for any length of time, you will know that one of the topics that we really, really like to home in on is the topic of irreducible complexity. And the reason for that, of course, is that we are we're dealing with a program that really shows and highlights how much God's creation is backed up by science now, but how God's creation is so irreducibly complex. In fact, the definition of irreducible complexity is, is the idea that certain biological systems cannot evolve by successive small modifications to pre-existing functional systems through natural se selection. So basically, it totally debunks the whole idea of um, evolution. And of course, Richard. Hello, Richard. Hi, Laura. Lovely to be with you again. Absolutely. And you're, we're going to be talking about irreducible complexity Absolutely. as a, a pertaining to the nervous system, the electrical system of the body. Absolutely, absolutely, exactly what we're going to talk about. I would like just like to say, because the evolutionists uh, love to talk about gene mutation. Gene mutation, that's our DNA, changes successively to form complex systems. Now, of course, Dr. Laura's a GP, practicing, and I used to be a GP. And we know, don't we, Laura, that gene mutation simply doesn't work, doesn't work for evolution at all. We've seen gene, gene mutation uh, with spina bifida and um, anencephalin, which means babies born without heads, and um, Down syndrome, and all sorts of other really nasty conditions, sickle cell anemia, and you've seen lots more as well. Um, and basically, they never cause anything better. They always cause something worse or even death. Is that right, Laura? That's absolutely right. As you mentioned, things like sickle cell anemia, Down syndrome, which, as we know, is due to, um, and it's, it's a, a actually quite common yeah. in younger women than in older women. It's supposed to be due to age, but yeah. actually there are lots more Down syndrome children born in younger women than in older women. Uh -huh. It's just that there are less children born in older women, therefore that's why the statistic seems higher. But as you said, sickle cell anemia, thalassemia, all these illnesses um, are inherited genetically and they are mutations of the normal gene. Yeah. And they cause disease, they cause disability. Yeah. Um, with people with sickle cell disease, their, their, their lifespan can be shortened quite drastically. They're, they have crisis, they have pain, they have problems with joints, they have, need to have early joint replacements. Yeah. It's not health and, and, and yeah. wholeness. Yes. So, yes, so mutations do not cause things to get better. Mm. And let's see, the whole point about um, evolution is that they say that pr uh, so-called primitive life evolved by chance in the primordial slime 3.8 billion years ago, and then there was gene mutation. Well, two things. It's primitive life, there isn't such a thing, because all life has DNA in it, which is the most complex genetic code in the universe. But moving on from there, they say that gene mutation happened um, and that more complex organisms evolved. Well, you just heard Dr. Laura, Braxton GP, who has just told us that gene mutation doesn't evolve anything. It causes illness and death. And we're just going to use today to show just one of many systems in the body. We're talking about the electrical system and the nervous system. And I think Laurie is going to introduce the first video. <laughs> Absolutely. Just before that, I'm just going to read Psalm 139. And this is a psalm that a lot of you will probably know and should know because it really sort of, it kind of compacts the whole thing into what God has done. Now, science has taken it to bits and science can prove lots of things. But Psalm 139, verses 13 to 15 says, For you, Lord, created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful and I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. And of course that weaving together yes. is what the scientists are trying to unpack, yes. but which we know that God made all together in one sequence, not over thousands of billions and trillions of years. Yes. And on that note, Richard, shall we go to the first video? Mm -hmm. And this is a fun fact that Dr. Richard has carefully and wonderfully prepared <laughs> about the miraculous electrical design of the human body. <laughs> Hello, my name is Richard Kent. Um, I want to talk to you today about the electrical design of our human 
bodies. Um, before I talk about the electrical design of our human bodies, I want to talk about the world in which we find ourselves today. We're surrounded by electronic gadgets of one form or another. Every day you use your laptop, every day you use your phone, every day you turn on the television, every day you get into a car or a train or a bus, every day you turn on the lights, um, electronic gadgets are everywhere and we think how clever we are in the 21st century to have all these electronic gadgets. Well, let me tell you that God has much more powerful electronic gadgets in our bodies than we can possibly think of. And these are much, much more carefully designed. Much, much more carefully designed. So we'll start with our brains. Our brains weigh about three pounds um, and actually consume about 20% of the energy in our bodies. But the ele electrical design of our brain is such that you could actually uh, run a 12 volt light bulb off our brains. Um, but this, it's micro circuitry. Our brain is actually made of lots of nerve cells called neurons and uh, the, new, the electrical impulses travel along the whole body at 250 miles an hour. Um, I'll come back to the nervous system, but let's now look at the heart. Now, our heart regularly contracts and relaxes 70 times a minute, and this is controlled by a very, very complex electrical system um, initiating the um, sinoatrial node uh, down the bundle of his and we doctors record um, the electrocardiogram um, as an electrical uh, event which happens 70 times a minute in your heart. There's a particular signature if you like the PQRST complex of the ECG and it's a very, very complex uh, uh, designed uh, electroconductivity so that the two atria and the two ventricles of the heart actually contract and relax at the same, at, at the appropriate times. Um, let's look at uh, our muscles. Now, our muscles contract and relax all the time. And it's all to do with electrical conductivity and depolarization and repolarization in our cells. Let's come back now to our brains. Uh, you may have heard of electroencephalograms. Um, that's a, a, an electrical recording of your brain and it's very, very complex. There's, uh, uh, the, the, what's actually going on electronically in your brain is highly, highly complex. But I want to tell you something that's even more complex, which is how God has designed our nerves. Now, in, in the wiring in our house or our television or whatever, um, electrons simply pass through metal or silver or gold wires. That's not actually what happens in our nerves. What actually happens is, is depolarization of our nerves and I'll try and explain very simply that potassium ions move into the cells, sodium ions move out of the cells, so that the, the polarity of the, um, the nerve cell goes from minus 40 millivolts to plus 40 millivolts, and this wave of depolarization travels along the nerve at 250 miles an hour. The retina at the back of our eye is, is, consists of rods and cones. And this uh, converts uh, photons into electronic images which are sent to our brain electronically. God has thought about electronics long before we have and done a far better job than we have. Thanks for listening and God bless you. Welcome back to To The Point and was that not fascinating or what? I love the last statement you said, God has designed this long, long way before 
<laughs> we, we came into existence also before we came out with all the gadgets. And the people who are watching Revelation TV at the moment, they're watching it from their iPads, their iPhones, their PCs, their TVs, and what. And these all need electricity. Yes. But the system, the electrical impulse in the human body is far more complex than that. It's so unique. The use of the transfer of ions from one side to the other side and that ripple effect goes further down and down the, the, nervous, um, the nerve cell. Yeah. It's absolutely amazing, Richard, isn't it? It's stunning. I mean, for most of us, if we were to ask to design an electrical system to conduct you know, electrical impulses, the last thing that I would ever think of is to have a semi-permeable membrane with a wave of depolarization traveling down the axon at 250 miles an hour. I mean, I can't think of anything more complicated than that. How on earth the evolutionists think that that all happened by chance is completely beyond me. Um, I mean, either nerves conduct electricity or they don't, and if they don't, the, the organism's dead. <laughs> so this thing has got zero time to evolve, and this is a totally magnificent system that we actually humans can't possibly replicate. We can't do this at all, can we? No, we no can't. No way at all. Absolutely not. No. In We've actually left out half of what happens because the, the electrical impulse comes to a, um, a ganglion at the end, and, and whether the, um, the actual electrical impulses travel to the next axon depends on all the hormones. And then you've got noradrenaline and, and acetylcholine, all sorts of other factors come into effect. It's just unbelievably complex. Irreducible complexity only begins to explain how complex the whole thing is. I love it. I absolutely love the way that you and I were trained in England under with the scientists, <coughs> with clinicians, but we went through a science degree. We did biology, uh, chemi biochemistry, anatomy. physiology, <laughs> anatomy, biochemistry, <laughs> and all that. And I guess some people may think those guys are totally wacky to believe in all this nonsense. And yet, yeah. if it was so nonsensical, how come they cannot actually reproduce it. Yeah. How come it's so impossible yeah. for them to reproduce something like this? And yet every day, every breath we take is based on hormones, chemicals, and the nervous system. You mentioned the brain. Yeah. If somebody was brain dead, they wouldn't be able to breathe. They yeah. wouldn't, their, their, their heart will not beat. Yeah. You mentioned the heart, you've mentioned muscles, people who've had strokes. Yeah. You know, what can happen with a part of the body becomes paralyzed yeah. because the blood supply is lost to that area yeah. and therefore the nervous system cannot work, cannot fire up the muscles to, to contract as in the healthy part of the body. Mm. We talked about the nervous system, we talked about the retina, the eyes. Yeah. So, so many things yeah. that point at, as you said, irreducible complexity. And uh, do you want to say anything else about that before we go on? Well, we could actually go, go on talking for a lot more time. We, we could. We need to get on to the next part of the <laughs> Right. Well, I've got another scripture to read, um, and this is from Genesis 2, 7. And it says, Then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. Richard. Well, I'm just, it's just the point is that God created man. Um, the evolutionists say we evolved from the apes. Rubbish. Um, Jesus Christ, when it says the Lord God, it's in capitals in your Bible, and that means Jesus, by the way. Jesus Christ, uh, uh, for man, and, and in this case, Adam, um, of the dust of the ground, Adamar means dust, and it means reddish, indicating blood. Um, so he, that DNA was already in the, um, in this form of Adam, the DNA, the genetic code, and the, um, Ad um, Adam's body was made of 66 different um, elements. Very interesting number that, actually, because six is the number of man, but anyway, there were 66 elements, and there still are, in his body. But it wasn't until God, br uh, Jesus Christ breathed the spirit of Adam, in, which had been created in Genesis 1, um, into the dead body of, or not yet alive body of uh, Adam, that Adam came alive, and electrically came alive for the very first time. And it's, uh, not only did his spirit come into his body and he became a living being, but his, his whole body became active.
active and alive. His electrocardiogram started to work. His uh, electroencephalogram started to work. His, his muscles started to work. Everything started to work instantly because God is in control and God created each one of us. <laughs> I'm just thinking about all the E's, the EEG, the EMG, yes. the ECG, you know, yes. electromyelogram, electrocardiogram, yes. electroencephalogram. Absolutely. All electrical systems, the brain, the heart, the muscles. Yes. Um, amazing, absolutely amazing, all electricity. Yes. And, and we've got another uh, a fun fact that, again, mm. you've wonderfully prepared for us um, and viewers. And this is actually a fun fact that Dr. Richards prepared, and it's how the nerve cells work. <laughs> Hello, my name is Richard Kent. Uh, today I want to consider the nervous system in our bodies and how they work. I'm only going to look at part of the nervous system because it is so complex I couldn't possibly uh, de uh, describe all of it in one short little segment. Um, our nervous system is unbelievably complex. We have a central processing system called the brain uh, which weighs about three pounds um, protected by our skulls and uses 20% of the energy produced in our bodies by the Krebs cycle. If you deprive the brain of oxygen or sugar, for only three seconds I will be unconscious and, and fall off my chair and in, within three minutes I will be dead. Um, so I want to talk now about how the actual uh, nervous impulses are transmitted to the periphery of the body. And I want to describe first of all the size of the problem. Now you may be familiar with wiring diagrams of your car for example or of your central of your central heating system or maybe a wiring diagram of virtually anything today in electronics today. Let me tell you that if you were to put on paper um, the wiring diagram of the human body you would end up with a wiring diagram that is larger than the wiring diagram of the telephone system of the entire planet Earth, including all the mobile phones and including all the satellites as well. That is how complex your nervous system is. That's how large your nervous system is. And yet, um, uh, impulses travel along nerves at the rate of 250 miles an hour. Now, God has designed a very, very sophisticate, sophisticated way of actually transmitting uh, these electrical impulses along these tiny little axons, which are the long uh, strands of nerve cells. So I want you to look at this pe picture, and I'll try and explain it to you. The centre of the cell um, is actually negative, and the outside of the cell is actually positive. Normally, the center, the center of the cell is minus 60 millivolts, normally. The outside of the cell, by comparison, is positive. So there's a polarity, an electrical polarity, across the cell. Now, separating the cell, the nerve cell, from the outside of the cell is what's called a semi-permeable membrane. That means most of the time, uh, potassium cells um, inside the cell and sodium, sodium ions outside the cell can't get in or out of the cell. But actually at the point of depolarization, a gate is opened at the periphery of a cell and sodium ions come in, making, making the inside of the cell positive compared with the outside. So you get what's called an action potential of about plus 40 millivolts only for a few milliseconds and then a gate is closed so that the um, no more sodium ions can come in and then the polarity is reversed by potassium cells going out through a different gate so that the whole thing is reversed and then the sodium and potassium pump works to restore polarity back to normal. So basically uh, what actually happens is that uh, an impulse travels down a nerve cell by um, God having designed a very, very intricate design of changes of polarity, electrical polarity of the inside and the outside of the nerve cell according to how porous or how permeable the cell is to potassium and sodium ions. 
Now, can you imagine anything more complex than that? It's unbelievably complicated, and how evolutionists think that this could possibly evolve by chance is completely beyond me. This is totally supernatural and shows, these, uh, shows every sign of an intelligent, wonderful designer. His name is Jesus Christ. Thank you for listening, and God bless. <laughs>
Yeah. And I'm, I think, and I, I think as, as a doctor, I'm so privileged on a day-to-day -day basis to be able to be part of that. Yes. And to show people, I mean, I do a lot, I, I, I have to say, I teach my patients a lot about how their body works and, you know. Right. They'll come in and say, I've got a sore throat yesterday and they want to be better by tomorrow. And I think, unless a miracle happens, that's not going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. it yeah. takes four or five yeah. days for your immune system yeah. to do this. And yeah. I kind of tell yeah. them, yeah. and it helps them to understand that, you know, yeah. antibiotics aren't going to work. Just time and you yeah. eating healthily and resting and replenishing yeah. your body will get you better without the doctor's prescription. Yes. But, you know, just to let people know how the body works, it's such a privilege. Yes. And I hope your viewers are out there watching and, and really encouraged to, to, first of all, give God the glory because he deserves yeah. it. He yeah. has made us so wonderfully well. Yes. Now, we've only got a couple more minutes. Do you want to add anything to what we've said so far, Richard? Um. Well, just to add to what you've just said, um, you mentioned anaesthetists. I used to be an anaesthetist. and actually gas I worked, man. Yes, I was a gas <laughs> man. I worked in a teaching hospital in, uh, you may have heard of Johns Hopkins in Baltimore in, uh, in the States and also in Johannesburg teaching hospital there. And we had banks and banks of uh, monitors and we monitored all sorts of things, pulse, uh, pulse PO2, PCO2, temperature, uh, respiratory rate. We had about 12 different things we were monitoring. Even they weren't really enough. It just shows how complex the whole thing is. It really, really is. And so viewers, if you're watching and you like to interact with us, certainly please feel free to do that. Um, you can contact us on info at revelationtv.com. Please tell us your stories. Have, have you been in, in um, intensive care unit? Have you been a, a patient admitted? Or have you had a baby who was born prematurely, who needed to go? And did it make you think, wow, what an amazing creation that God has, that God has made us? Did it give you an awe and a reverence to God? Or did you not think twice about it. We'd like to know. We'd like some uh, feedback from you. So do uh, contact us on info at revelationtv.com. Uh, so Richard, we've talked about creation. We've talked about irreducible complexity. And we've given examples about how mutation doesn't cause wellness and super people like superman and superwoman. <laughs> Mutations cause disease and disability. And we've talked about the fact that God has irreducibly complex, complexly <laughs> 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 created us in this way and it's just to encourage you that you yourselves have been fearfully and wonderfully made by God you've been watching to the point with uh, Dr Richard Kent and myself Dr Laura Richardson thanks Richard this is such a wonderful program interact with us info at revelationtv.com you've got Roke you've got all sorts of devices we'd love to hear from you until the next time God bless stay healthy bye-bye